Good afternoon and welcome to another week in our garden. It's very overcast and we have that awful east wind which is coming from over there and there's also the motorway there so you can actually hear the lorries etc as they go down the motorway. We only get that when we have this east wind so I do apologise. Now this week we're going to start by picking these few butternut squashes because it is getting rather cold at night now. Our lowest up to now has been 5 degrees Celsius which is not too bad but we're destined to get colder so most of them are coloured up nicely to pick so I think the best thing to do is get these into the shed. Now we've got various sizes from very large to very small. The stems are just beginning to colour as you can see so we can pick them quite safely now but we'll pick them with quite a stalk on them and then let it go back naturally. Now this one as you can see it's a funny shape but the stalk is really colouring up so we'll start by taking this one. Support them well underneath because they're quite heavy and just give it plenty of stalk as you can see that's tied around the the plastic so we'll take that off we'll just take that off there you go funny shape but it's still a butternut squash okay. i'm going to take this one here because i keep banging my head on it so let's have this one away we'll take that that and that and then let's take these leaves off there you go the markings is where it's been catching on the, on the frame etc but that's fine. Now we'll take this one, it isn't quite ready as you can see with the colour but we'll probably use that one first or leave it and let it mature in the shed. As you can see the even the stem is quite green on that one. It's definitely not ready, but we will take it. There you are. Now it's in the wheelbarrow. You can see it's definitely not right, that one. Right, right. let's just take these two then. Good stalk, if possible. You'll find that the bottom ones will want a good wash, but that's fine. We'll take this other one and then... If I can, yes I can. There you go. We'll just take that dried bit of stalk off. Look. And that. Very dirty, but that doesn't matter. It's a nice squash, that one. Now, I think it best, if I was to pick them all now and then show you what we've got. Now, we've harvested the butternut squash. There they are in the wheelbarrows, quite a few. Now, now it's <laughs> just beginning to rain so what we'll do, we'll pop up to the shed and get these wiped and put them in the shed and then we'll start from the shed and hopefully get down to show you how I prepare the land for the onion crop next year. Now we set the Butternut squash out in the shed just to store them for a little while. Quite a few, various sizes though. Now the ones at the end that have split, we'll send those up first and Diane says she'll cut them and see whether they can be used or not. These two as you can see are not really ripe yet so we've put them in the light and we'll see how we get on. Now while we're in the shed I'll just take you around and show you what produce we've got stored in here. These are the pumpkins that we have left. We've got quite a few up at the house for decoration and especially the turkey turban look very nice. 
Now these are the apples that we've stored for mainly for ourselves but we have given a lot of way. Gemma's had some, we've even sent some up for the horses that supply the manure for us. The potatoes are all in these bags stored and I do go through each bag at least once a month to check for any that haven't stored very well and then I take those out. That, that goes on right until the end now. The onions, there's the onions that we put on the strings and there's enough there to get us through I think. They're storing very well and quite easy to check because you just spin them and you can see whether they're all okay. About once a fortnight just check them and have a look and see if, they, if you see any mildew on them then cut that one out and either use it straight away or dispose of it. The garlic, still got quite a bit left. We're getting through the garlic this year but it's very good. And of course the Apache chilli peppers but my goodness they are hot. They're drying out nicely now. They're very very light when they're drying out and they're, they're They'll be okay, they're shrizzling as you can see and then they'll turn brown but still in good use yet. That one's being used look so there's not much left on that one now. But there's still plenty there for what we'll want. Right, I have done the board that I said I was going to do now. Not everything is down on the board at the moment. Browns have emailed us today and said the uh, the seed order is on its way. So when the seed order arrives, we might be adding a little bit to it. Basically, on the rotation, all the brassicas have been moved down to the bottom and everything is moved up to one plot. So the board at the moment shows me roughly where things are, like we'll be going down in a moment to plot C, which is down for the main onions next year. Now that has to be prepared now, so it gets time to overwinter, ready for setting the onions in next year. We'll actually put the seed in in January and then the land will be good and ready if we start now to receive them. So we'll try and nip down. I do believe it stopped raining so we'll nip down and see if we can do a bit of preparation for the onions. Right we've actually made it down to plot C. The sun is just between a few clouds. In this quadrant is where next year's main crop onions are going to grow. So we need to prepare the ground for next year's onions and we do that by double digging manure into the bottom and into the a little bit into the top spit as well and I put on some hoof and horn meal as well which takes an awful long time so that'll be next spring before that starts releasing its nutrients mainly nitrogen but that's preparing now and it gives the soil chance to settle down through the winter and all the microbes that are in the soil will eat and work the manure that we're put in so we've got this fantastic bed of really good food for the onions for next season and we'll get some good onions then. Now I'm on my third trench now but I'll just tell you what I did from the beginning. The first thing I did was I dug a trench like this one across there and all the soil I took out and put over there 
that soil will be there until we finish now. The idea being that the trench goes to that end and then back down to this end and then that soil that we've saved goes back into the last trench to make the whole plot being turned. Now the first thing I do, I cover where I'm going to work with barley straw. Not only do we dig it in as we go, and it's good for the soil anyway, but it makes life a lot easier for walking on while you're digging, especially if you get a bit of rain, you know how the muds will stick to you and makes it difficult to work. So if we cover it with barley straw, or any straw really, but barley straw you can actually get some that's been chopped so it's a little bit easier to to dig, dig in. That's, that's the barley straw. What I actually do, I put it in the chicken run and they go through it and see if there's any corn in it and they'll have that and then I put the barley straw on here. The bonus being that you do get a little bit of chicken manure as well. This is horse manure and as you can see it's well rotted and it's got a lot of straw in it. It's about seven months old I believe. Now we're going to put some of that in the bottom of the trench. It's usually about half a barrel load per length of trench done. So we just put that in all the way along. Use the shovel now because it can't get with it. That's fine. Now, the little bit I've still got in the wheelbarrow, I want to use that to dig into the top, so I'll show you what to do with that in a moment. We need to dig that bottom of that trench down now. So for that I use the steel handled fork because this is quite heavy land. Push it right in and then turn it over. Now this was done, this was manured like this three years ago and the idea is if you're doing it on a rotation at least once every three years each plot will be double dug and as you can see that's there's still a bit of clay in it but it's getting there it's on its way turn it over break it down All the way to the end. Full, full fork down, really work it in. How sticky it is down there. Now, when you get towards the end, try not to bite too much off, I should not be able to leave her. Just little bits. And then we'll turn. If I can do it. There it goes. 
and then we'll turn for the last one. That's it. Level top. That's fine, look, that's dug right down there. Now, what I do is I use some hoof and horn meal. Let me show you. There it is, hoof and horn meal. And I scatter that in there, about half a bottle to the run. And all I do is like that lot, so it goes on there and in there. You have to watch the wind a little bit. So that's about half now. Half a jam jar gone in there. Pull the back of the, the fork and just work that in the bottom. Don't touch that just there, just the, the bottom. And now we need to move to start the next trench. I use the digging fork for this and I pull that one out. Right. And then we measure off this side. I use the hook this side so I can hook it over the, the timber back. Like that. And then, because this one's now loose, you can put the fork in and then go to a slight angle and that'll tighten that up. Now these two sticks, I always move to there so that when we're at that stage, I know where I've manured up to when I'm filling over and cleaning out the bottom. And that one, we'll just put it there. Now, if you remember, we left some manure in the, in the barrow. So now this, we sprinkle along the top of this run. Best, I just throw, throw into there. You see. Then you know you've got half a barrow in there ready. Now what to do now? I take my digging fork and. Measure off See now as we As we dig this over we're mixing this bit of manure with the top spit as we go So don't bite off too much remember and just spin it over like that You see? Right to your line and go straight down. And we're mixing that as we go. When we get a little bit further we'll clean out more. Just pop that over. And this takes the straw as well with it and mixes that in. So instead of just turning, try to do some one way, some the other like that. So it's mixing it. I'll do it there, then I'll show you how to clean this out. That must be level.
Now, when you've done a little bit, just turn your fork and you can just flick that off. Just keep the keep it nice and level. We'll take all the crumbs out when we've got to the other end. So I'll take this to the other end and then I'll show you what to do next. Now I've dug to the end, turned it on over onto the previous piece. Now there's a lot of nice soil in the bottom of the trench as you can see. So we get the trusty old shovel and we just take this out. Now remember when you're doing this, don't go too deep or you'll be bringing the clay, clay up, all the subsoil up that you don't want. But you can see how nice that is. If you see how high it is now, and it'll be that high when we finish, and then through the winter, as the microbes eat the manure, etc., and it settles, it will be as level as that bed over there, ready for planting your onions. So clean it out. Remember, whatever you do, don't to make it nice. Keep an eye out if you see any. If you see any lumps of clay coming up or subsoil, throw them back. You don't want them up there either. Really. And then clean it all out. And then what I'll do, I'll set up and then that'll be it. So first thing, pull that one out. Push them well in and then this one, same again. If you do it at a slight angle it pulls your line taut as it goes in. Nice tight line. Then move these, remember, to there and that's how we double dig and put in manure in the bottom spit, some hoof and horn and some manure into the top spit ready for the winter to settle and then next year it'll be a beautiful plot. You might just have to next year just fold the top a little, say the top two or three inches and then it'll be ready for accepting the onions and like this you'll have some cracking onions. So a lot of work and remember really make a fuss of it when you've got it open because you won't open this piece of land if you're doing the rotation it won't be open for another four years. So make a good job, seal it down and next year we'll do that plot. So now, this is for the onions, this is deep, deeply dug with a lot of manure going in. Now next week, we'll do the plot on D that is going to take the Brussels sprouts, which is slightly different to what we do, but I'll show you the way I like to do it to produce some good Brussels. Likewise, there'll be another plot on how to I do my ground preparation for cracking cauliflowers. But at the moment, we're going to have some good onions if we do this. Remember, if you're doing it and you're not used to doing it, be careful you don't do too much. Don't go near your back or anything when you're doing it. So if you're using it, do a bit and go for have a cup of tea because that's where we're going now. That'll be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Many thanks for being with us. Thank you for watching. And many thanks for subscribing. We do appreciate it. Now remember everyone, if you're doing your digging, do a bit and rest a bit. Don't do too much. 
but saying that by the end of next week when we do that video I'll show you this plot here complete and you'll see how high it is and I'll show you how we prepare the ground for the Brussels sprouts so take care stay safe and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now